Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about Adrian and I heading up to Bundaberg to help Damon and Jess with Brewpeg and about fixing up a little 3.3 Mercury. It's also sponsored by MarineEngine.com. The trip started by reacquainting myself with Adrian's fan belt. We used the forklift to load the little Suzuki 250 onto the truck so we had something to ride around in once we got up there. Uh, I've just woken up from a bit of a sleep in the swag on the uh, back of the truck. Uh, time to push on I think. We're almost there, about four hours away. Wake Adrian up. Haven't got the heart to wake him up. We're doing our uh, rapid antigen COVID test before we uh, go near Jess. Reading the instructions. So. It's not very complicated. It is. As you have a VB. Stick that up your nose. <laughs> Actually, what you do first is get one of those. There's your little test tube thing. All right, what, a tip VB in uh, Yeah, oh. no, that's a, like a little VB. I've already put mine on here. It sits there for 15 minutes and then we shine the UV light on it. They give you the little UV torch and you get your result. All right, then you swish that four or five times in your little test tube thing. You're a lab technician now. Fucking sweet. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Excellent work, all right. Now we uh, have a beer and wait 15 minutes. Sweet, what do I do with this? It's not juice. Uh, give it to Damien. Mm. <laughs> Idea coming up. Yes. All right, I'm going for it. Going for it? Gonna see the good news or the bad news. <gasps> Looks like I'm clear. I've got one line. I'm COVID free. Sweet. Oh, you're negative too. That's disappointing. Yeah, very negative. You're just a negative person, Adrian. I am. I, I'm just very disheartened that I don't have COVID. All right. Now, but apparently, yep. my friend Josh... Yeah, oh, that's right. ...stuck his under the tap and it went purple. Right. Maybe we should try this. We should try one. I reckon it's an experiment. It's an experiment. We'll just, maybe just try one of ours. Just give it some water. See if... Uh, yeah, and see if it goes positive. Okay. <laughs> water bottle here. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's a boy. <laughs> never, th never picked you as a squirter. Can't believe I'm sleeping in here tonight. Look what he's done to my cabin. In the morning, we got grinding on brew pig while Damien got about his chores for the day. First job of the morning, Adrian's fixing the uh, compressor up. Damien gave me a bucket here to move some sand. Clearly not the best bucket. Typical New Zealand quality buckets. Exactly. Then we're taking it up. I reckon you can get another four buckets in that. I'm Easy. Can we save any of that sand on the ground? While we were up in Bundaberg, Damien showed us a little 3.3 horsepower outboard that he had that wasn't running. It was given to him by a viewer and we figured, well, we need to film something, so why don't we try and get this outboard running? So we had a look. All right, a little bit stiff, but it turns. That's a good start. And then we realised that it does... Oh, hang on. Hang on. We attach that to there. It does have compression, which is good. We don't have the uh, lanyard for the kill switch. So we're just going to disconnect that. You've got two hands. Yeah, got three, just pop that out so it doesn't earth the coil. Sweet. And you now it's old, old fuel was in the bottom, but we have actually poured a little bit from uh, Damien's can for the pressure washer, don't tell him. And looks like there was quite a bit of oil in there. It's still quite red. Yeah. But we're going to give it a whirl and probably clean that out. 
We'll just cross each bridge as we come to it. Biggest chat. Well, actually, the gearbox is fine. It was. Oh, I was selecting gear, and it was doing neutral, wasn't yeah, it? Which so is it's good. It's yeah. It's locking up. Yep. So I feel like it's got quite a hope of working. All right. Looks like it's done a lot of work. No. Nah. Like two ten mils or something. Three. Yeah, a little anode. Yeah. The one on the anode. It's still all right. It looks like a uh, black Russian. It's kind of Kahlua and vodka or something. Well, I'll tell you what. If you if you guzzle half and everything's okay, I'll guzzle the rest. All right, fair enough. So I have no idea what... Oh, we actually did get the service manual for this. Yeah, we have. It's in, it's in Russian though, isn't it? No, no, I got the English one too. Oh, do you got the English one too? Right. So, we're going to undo the gear linkage. Oh, ah. there it is. 10 mil, how convenient. 10 mil. You need to work out a bit, mate. Ooh. These 10 mil bolts are getting a bit too much for my thing. It's all the holidaying in Bundaberg. One day you'll have guns like me. Oh. Dare to dream. <laughs> for our American viewers, Bruce. <laughs> Got it. Oh, yay. Hey. Where'd that come from? Here's that bit we're saying can't fall off because it's got a little uh, retainer on the end. Alright, Adrian and I are driving into town now. Gonna get a few things for the boat. Get a propeller, impeller, so everything else we need. Through. Yeah, you, I think you're clear. Here we go. Right yeah. Up, no worries. This car's very weird. You can't see out the windscreen. I don't know what's going on. Here we are in Cummins Street. It's very important to realise you keep going. You're in Cummins Street, but keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop at Cummins Street. Keep going all the way up here to the Detroit Specialist. I think that is the best bit of uh, business location I've ever seen in my life. Just go that little bit further and you arrive at the promised land. Here we are at Adrian's Marine Centre. What walk <laughs> Finding his own store. Getting some parts for the little Mercury. See if we can give it a bit of a service. Give it some love, get it running. One thing I really like to do with outboards you're not familiar with, We've got a new impeller for it, went to town, went to Adrian's Marine Centre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, because if you've got an outboard where you don't know the history of it and you run it and the old impeller is perished and all the little bits and pieces go flying up into the cooling system, you know, you'll, you know, you'll never get them out again. So I think we'll actually start by taking the gearbox off. The There's our little impeller. Little impeller. So it's not it's huge, yeah. But the other thing is we can run it for a little while with the leg off because the engine won't overheat, but the impeller will melt. We don't have earmuffs. We could stick it in our in the boat yeah, <laughs> and then eventually yes, yes. put it on the outside of the boat. Definitely. That can be our test tank. Um, oh, actually, even some of these old ones, we can just fill yeah, a drum up. A drum, yeah. But I reckon we'll pop it off first because it's much easier to do that now than have bits of neoprene get stuck up in the cooling system. Oil was pretty good. I don't think we'll even pressure test that or anything. I think it's uh, just a new impeller. This actually looks in pretty good nick. I wonder what year it is. That looks nothing, it looks perished or anything. I would be surprised if, I'm surprised if it's maybe done anything. That, I actually think that's had a service not too long ago. But better safe than sorry. <laughs> Lifting yep, it up yes. for the first time. Remember that now, yes. Um, so, uh, the pin, the Woodruff key sort of thing, it looks tricky. So I reckon we just stick it on with a bit of grease. Well, I think if we um... crack that one out. This is really. I know, I think it's actually had some servicing, but we'll keep that. Oh, definitely for a spare. Yeah, totally. Rip this open with my teeth and yeah. put a couple no. more front ones out. Oh, look at that, lanolin. Is that lanolin based grease? It is. So it said it's a type A grease, and Yamaha use a type A yep. lanolin for almost everything. Okay. So for their bolts and... Everything, just about everything in there. So I reckon we stick that on with a bit of grease so it stays there. Right. It's actually quite loose. Yeah. Probably because it's the wrong one. No. Oops. I'll just get a... The pin's actually tied to yeah, climb out wandering. the... Yeah, go wandering. climb out the bottom. I could actually do a somersault. Yeah. Mm. 
And does it have a hole in the impeller? Yeah, yeah both sides. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. So do you need to put any slippery grease on these? Okay, yep. So this is a good idea to grease yeah, that. Yeah, just, just a little smear. I've actually spoke to a guy once, Yamaha in town. He said they had one, they couldn't get the pump to prime and they cleaned the excess grease out and started working. Oh, that's weird. Wow. So down. Now this is where it's important to know which way the outboard rotates. Does, uh, yeah, but the prop turns that way because it's a right hand prop. Oh, right. So, let's just put it down and then just turn it as we... Okay, yep. Yeah. Look at the pocket for the you there. So the trick is to do these up just until you hear the plastic crack and then back it off. Back it off two turns? Two turns up. Tides will you back off two flats. Yeah. <laughs> it's not dripping too much, it must be going somewhere. Yes. I can't say it went particularly well trying to fill the gearbox with a bottle that has one of those plastic Marty sauce lids on it. I think you're better off with something soft and flexible or one of those pump packs. What if you suck on it? Yeah, there, that is an option. Not a good option. We've got our lower unit pretty much ready to go. So let's see if this starts. Oh, thanks to J and K Cranes for the use of their truck for this for the trip. J and K Cranes rock. Should I actually get my laptop and we'll get the manual? Oh, I reckon so. Oh no, it is. It's rubber plugs. Just rubber plugs. Is it? Ah, oh, there you go. There we go. Look at that. Well, no, it's not because I missed it when I shot at it. True. Ooh. The gap's closed up. Can but it's not too bad. Oh, really? Can I move it's not your the out shocker. shocker. Slide into the side. But which way would the side? I just want to go there. Oh, yeah, there it is. Hang on. Well, we've got the bear in the air. Phew! It's just not going to do it. It's not going to cut the mustard. We tried our best. We've poked the bear. We've poked the bear, but it hasn't happened. The 10 here is a one millimetre gap. And we're definitely below one millimetre. A little bit anyway. So we'll just throw the new plug in. Keep this as a spare. Just get the uh, tool, set it back to one millimetre. Of course, that's on Renko, which isn't here. So, Adrian, you want to talk us through your technique for installing an NGK spark plug? Yeah, especially in a marine application, I'd like to see a bit of, a bit of grease on that. Bit of grease, a bit of and, grease a, and a crush washer, it says okay. tight, and then one half to two thirds turn. Here you can see we've gone for the one cylinder model with the pressed tin cylinder head. To me it looks like this bow board has done sod all. It doesn't look like it's done a lot of work, does it? The piston is clean. Well, hey, Damien, yeah. where'd this outboard come from? Uh, Hasn't done much work. It's a good little unit. You know. yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you, Rob. It's actually a really good outfit. No, it's really not done much work. No, no. I know. Mm. Yeah, he said it was a good, good little motor. Yeah, just had a couple of things that he didn't know how to fix. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. Everything we've looked at is looking pretty tidy. Yeah. Actually, hear it clicking away. Pretty good black, blue, nice blue spark. You can just see it. Yeah. So, um, also we were talking before we pulled it over, we can feel it had compression, so you know it's, you know, pretty healthy. If you want to know what it feels like when it doesn't have compression, take a spark plug out, pull it over, that's what an engine feels like with no compression, put it back in, and hopefully if your engine's healthy, that's what it feels like with compression. Oh, that's good. So we're going to do the, we've got the socket, the, no, I've got the spark plug in, it's just, so just get the element onto there. I don't know, that's finger tight, so half a turn. Half to one, two thirds, yeah. So if we put the ratchet there, we should be able to get a nine, nearly 90. We're going to try and run it on a bit of aero start, not start your bastard, we couldn't get any. Uh, just to confirm, if it starts, it's fuel. Uh, aero start or any starting fluid is a really good diagnostic tool. If you spray it, it starts, your problem's fuel, that's all there is to it. Uh, we got to put a little bit of WD in just to lubricate the bore a little bit first, then we'll use the Aerostar. Ideally, I'd get a spray bottle and just put two stroke mix in, but couldn't find one. Is it either? Yeah. All right.
Given it runs on starting fluid, we know we've got spark, we know we've got compression, so all we need to do now is clean the fuel system and the carburetor. Recall unit's completely independent, doesn't spring off on you or anything. It's just keyed in here. Yeah. WD, because WD dries out a bit more, but um, mm. inox is always good. That looks, like looks pretty tidy though, doesn't it? Yeah. But preventative maintenance keeps it that way. I thought you were having a swig then. Varnished. Mm. Yeah. All right. Fair call. Man, that was nasty. That's a very good question. Choke just blocks it rather than being a butterfly valve. In some ways it's a better design because when it's open it's completely clear whereas with a butterfly valve it's you know causing turbulence and a restriction even when it's open so in some ways this is the best design. Oh it's an 8mm. Well that's not maybe 9. It's a weird one. Yep. Well we better have dinner first. Yeah all right. Here we go, it's coming off anyway. So it's got a little rubber opening up there, that's to help yes. seal it so it doesn't suck air. Yep. Maybe. And that's all it took to get it off was just the one hose, hose clamp, clamp essentially, yep. yep. Um, it does look like it might have a bit of... Yeah, a bit of water. A bit of water, a bit of crap down the um, yeah. fuel inlet hole. So we'll drop the bottom off. And we're thinking maybe stuck float or needle. Mm, maybe, or and a bit of gummy fuel, maybe it just gummied everything up too. Yep. If it's, as soon as it sat for a little while. That's the mixture screw. Yep, idle speed screw. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a bit crusty, isn't it? Ugh. That'll do it. Oh, Mr. Hart, what a mess. So the float? It doesn't have fuel in it. That's always good. And look, oh, look this is all quite stuck. Yep. Um, yeah, and, and so is the needle in there. It's quite stuck in the hole. And look, we can see where the fuel's turned to. Yeah, varnish. Varnish and yucky. So we can, um, and that's the jet, the main jet, as they would call it. So as oh, plunger, know, plunger needle. I suppose, yeah, plunger move up there to lift the needle up out of the out of that jet, and it um, gives you more air, gives you more, more fuel, more the more air, so it draws more fuel. So, and that, you can actually see the waxy build up on the needle too. Mm, yep. There's a bit of goop in there. Certainly um, more than I expected, to be honest. But actually, you can tell it's quite a new car, but it hasn't done a lot of work. Like it's yeah, just the fuel sitting there. Fuel sitting there. Which is why winterization's important when you're putting your outboard away. It is very important. All right, let's grab a flathead and some carb cleaner. Yeah. So this should undo the nut on the top. So you get this bracket off, clip it away from the plunger. I'm going to give the bowl a little soak. See if we can't dissolve some of the crud. Do you want Damien to help you with that? No, because that'd be just embarrassing. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. I think I've just now, oh, I said, now, I've never hold that that way. Oh, look at that out of there. It's a bit stiff, isn't it? So that's actually a little cable in the bottom of the. Uh, okay. So there's some little aluminium dimples on the side. So the shifter actually quite nicely grabs them. Yeah, right. Like a spanner. So hopefully that'll just pop undone. Nice. Oh. There's no need to be too butcherous. Butchery just leads to trouble. It does. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. That's all held together by that. You can push that down. Spring just returns it. Yep. Keeps the tension on it. So we just go, oops, put that down there like that. Oh, okay, and slide the cable out. Slide yeah. the cable out. Oops. <laughs> I've got it, it hasn't gone far. It hasn't gone far. But that also, that spring holds the needle in. Yep. With a little circlip. Little, little, just a little disc to hold. So the circlip 
If you want to lean it out, reach it up, you right, move okay. the circlip up and down the needle. That's pretty cool. Um, a lot of motorcycles are the same. So it's like a coarse adjustment rather than the... Yeah, rather than the fine adjustment. On the screw. So when we go for going for more horsepower... Yep. Um, yeah. Also has a nice little... Nice little spring inside the um, hole there. Oh, yep, yep. Just comes in from the side, just to help stop the needle, keep the needle flopping around. Yeah, right. Interesting. Have you got any... Uh, a, a pin? Okay. A safety pin or something? Uh, no, how big is it? I've got like the, the um, iPhone. We just need to uh, push this pin out. Oh, yeah, I've got an iPhone thing, you could push it out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, paperclip or. Yeah, I'm to break your thing. Alright, while well, we're here waiting to get something to push, let's take this jet out. Jets just have a particular. Diameter, the little hole in the centre. Bigger the jet, more fuel. Damien's kindly supplied his uh, iPhone SIM removing tool. Look at that. Work a treat. Thank you, Damien. All right. So you can see here, this is the, the needle inside the seat and uh, this well, hooks on here. The goop in there. Over the end of there, so it hooks on, and then the float here closes that off as the bowl here fills with fuel to stop it overfilling. If it's stuck closed, it won't uh, get any fuel in. If it's stuck open, it'll just keep flooding. That's an eight. That's an eight. Water. I don't actually have a seven. Oh, yeah, there are. Right. Hang on. We have an adjustable seven millimeter. Here's one. I've got a smaller one too. Oh, a little one. A little one just to make it a oh, little bit nice. more. A little bit classier. Yeah, make it a bit more stylish. That's right. Bodge Master. All right. I'll hold. So this is what happens when you. Oh, look at that pop. Nice went straight away. Went really good. Nice. Are they shaping up okay? Are they shaping up the right so it is always good to have a good selection of tools. Yes, we're running a bit lean on tools, tools at the moment. We, we sort of came up not expecting to do an outboard, and um, here we are. Expecting Damien to own some tools. If we'd actually yeah, bought... well, he actually did tell us he owned tools. Yeah, if we'd bought a Leatherman, we would have had more tools than we've got right now. Yes. Interesting. So the barb is the seat. But yeah. So it is replaceable too, which is yeah, that's quite clever. Um, so we might. Bit of grind oh, that feels very soft. That that feels like it's going to break off any second. Yeah, very very stuck, closed. So no fuel will be coming into the carburetor bowl. All mm, right, hold it into the tin, Stu. All right. Oh, you hold the tin. All right. Oh, I thought it fell in then. <laughs> that was just a tricky manoeuvre. Don't mm, want to move. Not coming out, is it? I think if I was doing one of these again, I would just buy that part. Yeah, that's right. As a yep. matter of course, they wear anyway. Yep. Only that this one is so new, it might be okay. It might yeah. just be stuck with the gummy fuel. Yeah, we're going to do a time lapse now for about 45 minutes showing you that soak. Action as a vice, as well as double shifter action. Yep. Shifter on shifter. It's very popular on the internet. Apparently so. It's not sort of, no, I sort of can't. Need okay. some vice grips or something, don't we? Because that's been soaking in carb cleaner. Well, it's not moving. For over an hour. Tried compressed air down the end. Down the end. Uh, how long's that pin? Can we use that pin to push it out? <sighs> Maybe. I know, we'll probably, or is it hitting the, the seat? I think, it's hit, I think it's hitting the seat in there. There's a yeah, before it's and we'll probably yeah, only damage the tip and have it leak anyway. Yep. We may need to replace this part. Mm. I'm thinking it's probably a very common part because we can probably get this out, breaking it, and use this if they've only got a needle. Yeah. But definitely. it'd be nice to get a pair. Right. I'll, I'll chase up. Give him a call. Marine. Adrian's Marine. Um, so it comes as one complete the needle and seat together. No, just the needle. Just the needle, alright. He hasn't? No worries, he hasn't. Oh. 
All right, turns out the part's not in stock and it's at least a week to get it and we've only got a few days, so we're going to get a bit more brutal in our efforts to get this out. Oh, oh, oh. he's broken it. <sighs> now we're barely in trouble. Even, yeah, we've barely even touched it. So... I wonder if there's any outboard wreckers in town. Carburetor. Maybe. I think we need to do a town trip because we're not going anywhere without that. No. We can't even really fake well, it, can no, we? we can. We could use a bulb to sort no, of prime it. Because... Oh yeah, we can attach that just somewhere. That, that there is only... It's only locating. Oh, uh, so it'll still... Still work. It'll still push up on it. It'll push up and come fall down. It's yeah. only just to stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's never going to get down that far, so we might still be okay. We might still be all right. So, can we get it out? That's the important thing anyway. And will we make it work? Of course we won't. I mean, we'll. Well, of course. Oh, sorry, that was my mistake. Oh, it's coming. See, if you hadn't slipped the first time, butterfingers. Look at that. That's a little bit crusty. Well, it's all just carburetor goo. Yeah. I think, I think it might have actually come better a bit more soaking, you can see it's Longer, yeah. a bit more getting down the side of it. All right, let's start putting this back together. First thing I do is try out our broken, corroded needle. Can't get a new one, unfortunately. So we'll pop this in. The bit that's broken is actually the little hook on the back that goes into the pivot here. But when the float comes up, it should still push the needle to block the fuel off. But when the float drops, we're kind of counting on the fuel pressure by gravity to push the needle back out and allow fuel to flow. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Let's screw the seat and the barb combined unit, screw that back in. And then the needle just drops in here. So we know this goes down because this is the bit the needle normally hooks into. I can get all sorts of wonky flow pipes. Be mindful too, some of these little aluminium housings don't go swinging on the screw either because it's not mine. When you do it up, they break so easy. They're not sort of squeeze it with your fingertips. Get a feel for it before you actually go and start hoeing into it and tighten it up. On the top of this needle, as Adrian was saying, there's a circlip that lets you set how rich or lean you want it to be. We need to line up the gap in the washer with the channel here that the cable for the throttle goes through. Can be a little bit fiddly. Fiddly, yeah. Sometimes you might have enough room if you put a little cable tied around the spring to squash it up. So you put it around the spring. Yeah, yeah right. Up, and then you can clip it on. But it can be your second pair of hands. You can, it's, it's a bit easier. It's like two of it, so it's a bit easier. Bingo. Look at that. Ah, uh, so. I'll show you this too. This is our, basically our idle speed screw, mixture screw, and it goes into this little notch on the plunger here as well. There's also another slot yeah. on the side there. To, to keep, keep it, it to keep keep it from getting it out, out, of, out of filter. Out of whack. Will it go together if you just throw it against the wall and swear? I don't know. Try, ah. Uh -huh. There. there we go. It's got a big gap. It's, it's in. Well done. So, is that a little O-ring in there still? Got a yep. little O-ring seal. Got the O-ring. So we don't get a vacuum leak. Yep. I reckon we can pop that on the engine. Oh, there, sir. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do the honours. Yeah. Nice little. Yeah. That is there. So when you put this on, just keep your thumb on it. So when you so you're holding the rubber seal back against the end of the shaft, so just to make sure it's got a nice seal. Because any vacuum leak will will make it run like crap. Yeah, run lean. Poor little this little engine that it's hard enough life now. Then they have to try and make full vacuum. If suddenly it loses three horsepower, we've only got 0.3. That's right. Yeah. 
we get some more female viewers, maybe we could do a full mobby for them. I think we have a female viewer. Oh, do we? I'm pretty sure. Sometimes with these pool starters, they've got a sort of starting protection, so it can't start when it's in gear, but this is very straightforward, this one. Very simple. Need to make sure this little goes like that over the front of that cover. It's actually, um, now this earth, I think, was on one of these bolts. It's up here. We are on the earth. What are you talking about, Stu? Oh, well, yeah. All right, going back together. So, I reckon we fire it up, no no gearbox. No gearbox, yep, definitely get some bring, bring, ding, ding, ding. And then uh, do our in-water test. So, have you got a mixing ratio cup, Stu, for the fuel? Uh, I do, it's called the guesstimate. We looked it up, this is 50 to 1. And that is mercury premium two-stroke oil. Oh, it's got, a, it's got a thing on the side, but we don't know how much... So how much fuel does the tank hold? I reckon maybe one litre. I think we're going to have to guesstimate anyway because this holds 950 millilitres and the markings start at 800. Well, yeah, that's more than 20 mil. Yeah, but we're going a bit more, didn't you say? 40, so 40, 40 to 1. <laughs> they don't smoke like 50 bastards. Yeah, then no one, none of the cops will be able to chase us because we'll have a smoke machine. There'll be no more, there'll be no more midges tonight. James Bond style. Now, let's check for fuel leaks so we don't explode. Uh, pretty good. Uh, you reconnected the kill switch? No. Oh, it's because still unplugged? Still unplugged because cool. we've got no cable top. Got no, yeah. Oh, we probably could have bought one of those too. Um, so I'll put that in the run position there. Yeah. Choke, the choke on. on. And I'll give Just it a wing. hold. A pull. Hang on. <laughs> oh, look at that. Now the outboard was running nicely, it was time to find a prop for it. While we were at the coincidentally named Adrian's Marine Centre, we got a price on them and it was about $120 to get a new factory prop for it. So we decided we were going to find one and just fix it up. We went to a wreckers and we found a prop for $10. I would say it's probably from something closer to about 15 horsepower, way too big. So we started chopping it down and getting it to work with this outboard. The first job was to run this prop down to the machine shop and just get the diameter reduced a little bit, given it obviously came from a much bigger outboard originally. I reckon that is a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. It looked balanced when you were doing it by hand on a knife grinder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, like a, it's like a finely tuned turtle. Yeah. Too long. <laughs> If that fire is in a way to turn. We could definitely take a lot more off the back we want. And Even I the think... frog approved. Yep. <laughs> the cane toe. There's like the... Can we lift the cane toe? What happens if you lift them? This is the analog version of that song. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's milled like a cylinder head. Not bad, but if you get Robert to come in with a close-up shot across there... If you put a feeler gauge, like say a paddle pop stick, it would be pretty much... Perfect. On spec. Here we are. Oh, still hits. We do. We have to mark it to uh, drill. All right. Well, I'm thinking if I do this, screwdriver in the split pin. Uh huh. Ah, look at you, calipers. Wow. You're a man before your time. How does that work? It's genius. So and at the end of the day, we if we, even if we just follow that. It won't matter, yeah. Just... You'd have to do that all the back, but it's a good good for following here. I can always I can drag that into there. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Is it my turn to hold the grinder? Oh, I don't know. No, you can hold this while I cut it with the nine inch grinder. Oh, with a cutting blade oh. on. All right. Damien woke me up before six with his air horn again. He did make coffee. That's in his favour. But I think I have to sort this situation out once and for all.
we use this split pin as a shear pin and the shear power of our outboard sheared the shear pin. So we're going to try using this one doubled up. It means it doesn't make it all the way through in order to bend it over, but we're going to hammer it in so the head of it sort of retains it a bit. Also put a whole lot of sicker flex in there, let it set, it shouldn't come out. Probably a bit of sicker in the hole than on the shaft. Uh, to retain the pin. Yep. So we need our split pin. That way we should be pretty close. That feels better. There's a drill. It's in. Oh, it's gone in. So, and I reckon we tap that head of that so that it expands slightly more. If you see this level of engineering at your local outboard mechanics, find a new mechanic. Definitely. <laughs> Next job was to construct a hydrostatic test facility to support our future R&D work. A little bit more water in there, Stu. A little bit more, but the skeg's on the bottom, so won't, at least it won't hit the bottom. No. I reckon another, another 100 mils. 100 mils, we go half. Yeah. Sadly, the shockwave from our high five fractured the sheep in again, so even the large one wasn't up to the job. Looks like we got way too much prop area still, and the sheep in was too weak as well, I think. We had thrust for a moment. I saw that. Now we don't have thrust. Oh, I see it flipped. I think it that actually spat the bit, it sheared the pin. Sheared the sheep in. Why don't we put the double in and hammer it? I think so. Now we're going to try and line it up again though. That's alright, that won't be hard. We'll put it in gear, it'll turn, it'll be okay. Or we could just quit. No. Fuck. Last night we were the victim of our own uh, performance tuning. Too much power out of 3.3. Did our shear pin in. But when uh, Robin was taking an umbrella apart, we found a few pins in there we think may make good shear pins. So we're going to try put one of those in instead. The other thing we're going to do is try and take a little bit of pitch out of the propeller. We've taken quite a bit of meat out of it. it doesn't look particularly balanced. I think we need to take a bit more off that blade to even it up. But uh, we think if we take a bit more pitch out of it, we should have half a chance of not shearing the pin or stalling the motor. Let's have a look. This is the pin. Adrian was saying it's, yeah, tight fit, but should hammer in. Eventually the time came for Adrian and I to head home. We hadn't got the outboard working particularly well with the propeller yet, but we threw it in the truck so we could finish it when we got back. We needed to put some stuff on the truck on the way home, so I ended up riding the bike home. It's about 1500 kilometers, so a reasonably long ride, but I hadn't ridden a bike for a long time and I actually really enjoyed it. That bike's actually Vicky's bike and it really got me thinking, hmm, I think I'd like to buy another bike because I really did enjoy it. Anyway, let's pick up from leaving. Adrian bought a couple more Detroits. He bought a 12V71 and a 453. So the 12V71 is hopefully going to end up in a bit of a project. So we'll see what happens and definitely show that in future videos. These engines came from CI Diesel Services in Salisbury near Brisbane. Carl also provided the parts needed for Damien's Cummins to convert it from a truck engine to a boat engine. I'm not sure I explained it properly, but uh, 
Renko never made it back to Sydney due to bad weather and it's been bad for a while. So Matthew and his family have kindly uh, looked after it for me at their place and he has now given me a nice present which is uh, Red Dwarf's replacement. Red Dwarf's looking a little bit sad but it is very nice and he's even put lettering on it and everything. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. All right, let's go for a little run, warm it up, eh? We went for a short run on Renko with Adrian and Matthew. I should have filmed it because the Detroit started the moment I pressed the button after a couple of months sitting there, so still running really nicely. We do want to do the injectors though. The injectors, I think, need a little bit of work. We're thinking of going down one size from N60s to 55, something like that, uh, just because I don't run it that hard. Also, we noticed we weren't getting full RPM. I then realized that I had changed the alternator during the trip, which means my taco is probably way out. So we're going to change injectors and then recalibrate the taco when we get home. It turns out that Matthew runs a YouTube channel of his own. He never mentioned it. It was actually his mum who told me. He was quite embarrassed that she told me he's not a self-promoter. You know, he wasn't looking to help out with Renko to promote his channel at all. He wasn't even going to mention it, but I did find out. And, uh, He's made a video on restoring a reel that uh, that I had. One of the, it's actually I had two of them, so I'll put a link to that video in the description and maybe up in one of these corners if I can figure out how that works. So thank you to Matthew and your dad Peter for both looking after Rinko and for the new inflatable. Much appreciated. Oops. Bag fell back on its ropes. Got caught in the wheel. Then it fell onto the exhaust and caught fire. It's gonna be one of those afternoons, isn't it? When I got back, I met Adrian at his workshop and we unloaded the V12 and then got back into trying to finish off this uh, little Mercury 3.3. So uh, we're gonna see whether the extra bit of prop we cut off allows it to go into gear at idle without stalling. That's really what we're shooting for. As soon as we can do that, I think we're ready for our first sort of proper run on the water. We're not on the water, we can just unplug the wire today. Yes, we can. So it's easier. not on the water. We'll unplug. Unplug. Don't try this at home, folks. But that looks like someone's already unplugged it. Yeah. That oh, that's right. We were going to uh, just choke it out to stall it. Yeah. So, all right. I'll put a link to a video on how those kill switches work, in case you're wondering. It's a starter. Still be too much, surely. When we were in uh, Brisbane looking at Renko, Matthew and Peter there had a little Mercury, so it was interesting to see what was his a four or a yes. So it was interesting to see the prop on that. It was a three blader and it had a bit of meat to it, didn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. so at least we've seen roughly the amount of surface area, but it's the hub's smaller, so there's quite a bit of depth to the blades on this one. <laughs> Fail for the prop, win for the shear pin. So I think we just take a little bit more prop. <laughs> what can we do? A little bit more prop. Wow. Or now we're back, I could probably just buy a prop. <laughs> but that's giving uh, up, isn't it? No, that's right. But if we can prop this up to a very fine... Yes. We so get this till it's working. Yes. You're only got the engine working at its maximum capability. Yeah. And you'll also get the maximum efficiency out of pushing the, yep. the boat through the water. Yep. All right, so we'll keep shaving it until we can get it to go into gear without stalling and leave it there. So I'm thinking we'll just go yeah. like that in a straight line. So if we come, maybe we should make a point, measure a point on the hub and go this much in on each of them. Yep. We should probably... I'll get my steel ruler and try that. Excellent work. Consummate professional. Got to put a new uh, alternator in the landy, it died. Being uh, diesel, the um, alternator also has a little vacuum pump on the back because you don't have vacuum for the brake booster. 
diesels don't have vacuum because there's no butterfly valves there's no way of you know restricting the air and creating a vacuum inside the butterfly valve so you need that on the alternator for the brakes job for tomorrow morning before going home 25 25 it's a fair chunk it I is i reckon less 20 yeah or 15 that's 15 yeah i reckon we can always take more off Okay. Here you can see we've got a bit of hose pushed over the prop shaft. The reason for this is this prop shaft's not splined, but the prop is splined, so it just takes up the gap for us. So we'll, and I'll get in there and I'll make that a bit, take the um, some shape in it so it doesn't become yeah. a fracture point. Yeah, right, yep. I reckon that's going to be quite a bit of meat. I mean, that's much more what the factory prop looked like. like. I can actually probably go in with the flap disc. Yeah, with the flap disc, yeah. put a scoop in it. So it actually takes a little bit more away, yeah. a bit more like uh, it should be. It's actually sculpted with a beautiful hub on it now. Taking away all the sharp lines in the corners, hopefully enough to stop any, any shear fracture points at high, high RPM. Perfect. We'll see what happens. Test. Are you ready? Back in the test tank. Back in the test tank. Hey. Success. It's amazing how much we took off yeah. in total. I think that's about the fourth time we've had another go at taking more off. Even after actually uh, originally cutting it to fit. It's a lot of metal off. You're running really nicely, it's in gear at the moment. I think we'll call that good and uh, do an on-water test to see how it goes. And now finally, just to give you a little sneak preview, we did make a boat out of an IBC to put this 3.3 on. We tested it, but before we'd really fine-tuned the prop, so that didn't go so well. Oh, oh now you're gonna get water in over the transom. Anyway, we did bring the boat back on the truck, so we're going to launch that up near Adrian's house on Lake Macquarie, do a final test, and we'll do a whole video on the boat itself as well. As well as that boat project, I also would like to put this outboard back together. This is the one before I left. I bought all the bearings, etc. This is the two-stroke that got run with that oil. I want to put that back together, get it running. Adrian and I have also been talking about some much bigger projects again. I know you guys like big projects, um, so we've been talking about either building a steel barge to push with Renko. Renko is a very capable boat. We've got you know a really good engine, all the Ray Marine electronics. You know it's a really good workhorse. Just doesn't have a lot of deck space. So we're thinking, why not have a dumb barge that we can just push with the boat, and then we can have a hydraulic crane, uh, you know, generators, air compressors, all that kind of stuff on the barge. And I think that'd make a really amazing combination. So we're looking at making that from scratch. We've also got now the V12 to put into something fun. Now, with the V12, we're thinking potentially something boat related or potentially something car related. So to that end, I have another channel I've run for a while, I haven't done a video for a long time, but it was called, uh, I think Dengar Wheels, the name changed a few times, but the channel does exist. I'll put a link in the description to that one and maybe up here again. But I think what we'll do is take that channel and rename it for the third or fourth time in its life and make it a channel that Adrian and I can own together and start doing some non-marine stuff. So if you guys are interested, subscribe to that because that's where we'll be putting all the, the kind of car, motorcycle, who knows what, on that channel. Anything that's not boating, essentially. Rather than dumping a whole lot of information on you guys now, I think what I'll do is organise a public live stream for very soon in the future to bring you up to speed with all the plans. Obviously, I've been offline for a little bit for various reasons. And uh, I think you guys, you know, need to be brought up to see what's happening, what the plans are, and what you can expect to see in the future. I'll set a date for that really soon and put a community post out so you know when it's going to happen. 
all right, well, take care. A uh, huge thanks to the Patreons who have kept the faith in the channel and the channel's future. You guys absolutely made both going to Bundaboo possible and filming while we're in Bundaboo possible. So thank you guys very much. I really appreciate your patience and understanding in what was happening in my life and with the channel uh, and sort of, you know, being there for me both sort of financially to mean we could get the gear we need to film again and uh, kind of emotionally and, uh, you know, making me keep faith myself in what we could do, you know, in the future. So really, really appreciate that, guys. All right, well, take care and I will catch you soon. See ya. Someone's made themselves a dust bath. Got yourself a little dust bath, Daffy. That's a good little spot. You just stay there. I'll be back. Enjoy your bath. It's all right, Daffy, you can stay there. Stay in your bath. It's amazing the variety of things they get up to all day long. They're always up to something different. You'd hate to be in a cage a little bigger than your body, wouldn't you? Not good for the battery hens. They don't have a life like you, do they? <laughs>